welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much. It's so nice to be here. This is like quite the different experience. Yeah, too. It's, it's a little bit different of a setup than uh, recording above Harrison Brothers. Sure, um, with the lack of AC. The lack of AC. Really didn't know where I was going and didn't really know what I was doing, but that has been almost four years now. Yeah. So we'd like to introduce yourself and we'll kind of reintroduce you to the podcast. Absolutely. I'm Alex Hendricks. I am a local singer-songwriter and I do artist hospitality at the Orion Amphitheater. Perfect. So a lot's happened since we last spoke. So talk a little bit about, you know, what, so we recorded in August of 2020, coming up on four years since you've been on the podcast. Talk a little bit about sort of what the last few years have looked like and kind of how this opportunity now with the Orion kind of came about. Yeah. So I, we spoke right after I launched my business. Mm -hmm. Uh, in 2020. And that was uh, something that I did when COVID hit. I'm really passionate about local businesses and Huntsville culture. And I mean, as are you, I feel like we've bonded over, <laughs> yes, for over sure. that many times. Yes. But it's it was all about making sure that once we got back from the pandemic, the places that made Huntsville cool. See, I told you. Yeah, I'm a big, big, big hand talk. I'm a big hand <laughs> um, The things that made Huntsville cool and unique were going to have uh, still be around, like yeah. for us to enjoy and love. And um, it was trying to make sure that these local businesses had the tools that they needed and the the promotion that they needed to make it to the other side. Yeah. And um, kind of a couple year, maybe a year into doing that, actually, mm. I spoke with Ryan Murphy and he had a position open for the Huntsville office manager. And it okay. was just him at that time, him and Andrew Seward. Wow. Um, and y'all at the time, y'all were in the top of the Huntsville Times? Bill, not or, yet. But not yet there. Not okay. yet. We were at the, I don't even know if the building still exists anymore. It was like it, the kind of derelict feeling okay. <laughs> building yeah. at the back of what was going to be, what was U, UG White and then it was oh, Pines Mercantile. Mercantile. Oh, okay. Back of that building. It's like yeah. the, like the staircase you get in for like from the alley back there. Okay. I think that space is still available. Oh, great. Yeah. But like, it's like, cause like Pints and Pixels was kind of back it there. It was a great building. It's great like, building. You should definitely, in. definitely fill it and help the downtown ecosystem. Yes. Please do. Don't try to sleep there. <laughs> yes. It's very loud at night. Okay. It's right by all. Of so it was just the three of y'all this time. It was the three of us. And wow. then, um, Miles, the intern was there like in and out working on things. Um, but it was just us. And my first big responsibility was to get us into the Times building. Wow. So um, I set up that office and um, I was office manager until, I mean, I guess it was almost a year. Wow. And then we were ramping up with the Orion and we were getting ready to open. And I was looking at what I was going to start doing once that happened yeah. and how the office manager position might shift and like what was going to be needed. And um, it just so happened that there was this position that that I'm very lucky that people thought was <laughs> perfect for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, it it just kind of all worked out, and so that was the artist hospitality position. Yeah, which is basically kind of dealing with what the artists get to like either drink and eat, and they're like while they're here at the Orion, their experiences behind the scenes is what you deal with. Yeah, anything in Huntsville. Um, wow. Sometimes people don't want as much input yeah. once they, they kind cross of just, the city yeah, lines. They kind of just want to do their own thing, yeah. sing, go to the next place, and that's it. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, I think some of them, I, mean, I would assume, get to like stay here some a little bit longer than others. And like, yeah. you know, you're getting to take them to places and schedule things for them. That's really kind of the Huntsville experience. That's exactly right. And it's it's kind of, it's really the same thing I was already doing. It's the same thing I was doing with my business. It was the same thing I was trying to do as office manager, mm. which was making sure that these people who are in Huntsville for the first time, whether they've just moved here, they've just been transplanted, or um, they've, you know, moved within our company, or they're artists on the road, whoever steps foot inside Huntsville, I want them to know Huntsville yeah, for as sure. much as they possibly can, and to really get a feel for it. And um, obviously, your your time span is much <laughs> smaller <laughs> with yeah. these things. Sometimes you have 24 hours. Wow. But um, it's making sure that we get these like local tastes backstage mm -hmm. and we get these local businesses that are able to do artist gifts when we're um, able to commission things. It's wow. everything. So you started in that position at, the, at the, with the first season of the Orion. So as the Orion's beginning to have actual shows, you went from being that office manager to now dealing with hospitality. Yeah. I switched um, March 
of 2021. Okay. No, March of 2022. 2022. That was our first season. Yes. Okay. I switched to that role then. The building wasn't done yet. Wow. So it was a lot of like trying to get <laughs> the yeah. things we would need for the kitchen and trying to get the things we would need for the dressing rooms. Wow. And working with our design team to make sure the dressing rooms came together like we wanted to and um, just trying to get everything set up for a building that wasn't done yeah. and a job that I'd never done. But before. like with the, <laughs> probably at that point you already had this schedule of the first show. Yeah. So like you knew when your deadline was. Oh, 100%. And then every day it just got closer and closer and like we we're not getting any closer to finishing. Like Ryan we have I, to like kind of run around with your heads cut yes. off a little bit just to kind of like feel like we're doing something even if it's not necessarily what needs to be done, we just got to do it. Yeah, just have to feel it. So it it was it was that I went from that little tiny office downtown to the big beautiful office at the times building and then all of a sudden moved to the site trailer yeah. on the construction site. beautiful a beautiful beautiful picturesque yes. just like the times yeah. building really but the definitely thought like as, as as your career at this position has 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 grown you're like this is where i envisioned myself yeah. three years in i wanted to be using a toilet <laughs> in this environment yes this is yeah. everything i hope yes for. for sure and then and then you're able to like the first waltz happens it's the first show with the orion and it's just Magic. Breathtaking. Breathtaking. Absolutely magic. And I mean, I think we've, I've gone to a variety of shows over the, I guess now kick, as we recorded this, it's a three days since the kickoff of the third season. Um, and so how, I mean, looking at that moment when you're in the trailer, when you're, you know, the building is not finished, you're, you're envisioning this green room for the, the, like to now three years in, like, could you, did you see it? Did you see that it had the potential to be what it is or did you, or was it still kind of like, I'm just trying to get things put together. We have to, a month and a half before the first show. I trusted the people who did see it. Yeah. I don't think I knew what to look for. Yeah. I was just kind of like, whatever you need, you I'll do it. the yeah. experts. So yeah. if like, you say so, you say? <laughs> <laughs> like, this seems right. Yeah. I don't know. Um, there were moments where I was like, "How? Where are the walls going to be? Like, what's happening and here? People are going to use this because why? And yeah, like, like, what's going on? Um, but just like visualizing it, there were times walking through and it was still a skeleton, and I was like, I am not going to yeah. ever know my way around this building. Yeah. And now it's like back of your hand. I could navigate it in the like, dark. I, I think I could do it better than my own house. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Um. Yeah, knowing like which weird little 1960s antique tchotchke goes in which dressing room. Like wow. it, it's yeah. just that kind of like, oh yeah, that's in 220. Yeah, of course. <laughs> just just make it happen. Yeah, you're like, hey, I got it. it. It's great. Uh, but that that felt not possible. Yeah, you're like, there, there, there's no <laughs> way I'm ever going to be able to do this. Ago. Yes, yeah. that is. I mean, and so how has, so now with, with this role at the Orion, you know, you're still a local singer songwriter. You still like to perform. How have you been able to balance that element of your life because it's something that is, is is very important to you yeah i think that it has helped me in my own music because it is this constant like regenerating well of inspiration mm -hmm. and it's so 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 cool to be able to like i'm backstage most of the time but once a show unless it's like a, a pretty hectic day yeah once a show usually i'm able to walk out and listen to one or two songs Wow. And just getting to see it all come together and getting to watch like the energy shift from the planning to the like excitement to mm. the actual performance of it is so gratifying as an artist to be able to watch other artists do yeah. that um, and watch kind of the whole like beast of it come yeah. together and the whole community of it respond. And it's just really has given me constant uh, reasons to keep going with yeah. my music. And so and, and you've been able to still perform some over the years. Yeah. Uh, and put out new stuff. I think as we're recording this, um, you've sort of like your uh, a single from the upcoming EP that you have not necessarily announced yet, but ha is going to release the singles and release in June. Talk a little bit about sort of what uh, the single is. If hopefully at the, at the time people are listening to this, you, you we're probably like a month or so away from it releasing. Um, but talk a little bit about, you know, how the single came about and then maybe what this the future EP is going to be like. Yeah. So I last year I released an EP that was a little bit um, like dark Americana, okay. but it kind of went back to um, the Americana roots that I played a lot when I was doing acoustic stuff because you I mean, I'm not I'm not a guitarist. Course, <laughs> I don't know if that's fair. Um, but that was kind of the sound that I 
settled into at that time. Okay. And uh, this next project is going heavier on like the indie pop and the wow. singer songwriter pop. Yeah. It's going to be a lot more synthy and it's kind of um, just like nostalgia pop. Yeah. Um, this next song the single is called Daddy Issues. Okay. It's coming out on June 7th. June 7th. The weekend before Father's Day. Perfect. As you do. Yeah, as you do. As timing you do. is timing is everything. It's true. <laughs> but this one is a lot more um it's a lot more fast-paced than things I've done before. I'm just yeah. really excited for people to hear it. I yeah. think it's uh a little bit more of a summer jam. Okay. And do you think that, you know, the the last year between these two different EPs, mm -hmm. you think the last year of the of the work you do at the Orion and that experiences you've had there is dic is the, is what's dictating this new not necessarily a genre shift, but a sort of a new uh a new area for you to that you haven't necessarily been at in a while. Yeah, to get to explore. Yeah. I think that it definitely all influences each other. Like um getting to spend a lot of time in the Shoals, getting to go to Muscle Shoals Sound Studio and getting to go to Fame and getting to spend a lot of time with like the Single Lock crew, mm -hmm. which is a really heavily, um, I mean, they do all sorts of genres, Single Lock does, but they're pretty heavily Americana yeah. um, base. It it made me want to pull that out again and like put it on and um, do it the best I could do it. Yeah, And then <clears throat> spending the rest of the, season after i'd made the ep kind of seeing these amazing pop acts come and mm. getting to watch like interpol <clears throat> and you know like <laughs> yeah. just totally different genres it's just a constant reminder of how fluid art can be and how you can really find inspiration in anything um i think it's something that has been brewing for a long time i'm gonna this ep will have object permanence on it okay. which is something i released a couple of years ago so it's it's always kind of been there um but I do think there's something about this year that feels like it gets the going right time. in that yeah. direction feels right. Yeah. Even though apparently everyone else in the world is going through this <laughs> yeah, year. <laughs> of course. I mean, I mean, yeah, it is, it's, it is, it's everyone's new favorite genre. It yeah. seems like. Um, so I didn't get that memo. Yeah. Unfortunately. But maybe next year. Maybe next year. We'll see. So, so, I mean, like with this new single release in June, is there plans to, is there already plans in place to, to perform live for these, like, at, at different venues what can people expect to see from alex i think that in the very near future uh people can expect some full band shows which okay. is not something i've yeah. really gotten to do much before um and yeah just a lot more high energy i performed as a solo artist for such a long time and that is definitely the root of what i do yeah. and the kind of um it's one little particular energy but it's going to be I think something totally different yeah. for this next EP and um, the single, I've already got another single fully recorded wow. and uh, it's going to be a feature with one of my very good friends and this amazing Huntsville musician who, um, I mean, everybody knows and he's <laughs> in every band ever. Okay. So it's really exciting. Yeah. Um, just a lot of really cool things and uh, trying on a different sound and trying on a different kind of um, show experience. Yeah. So Maybe I'll dance a little. Maybe so. Maybe I'll dance Maybe. a little. If you're lucky. If you have every, <laughs> Yeah, if you guys are lucky. Yeah. If I can get my heart rate to stay yeah. down long yeah. enough for if, me to if, do a little. If I can be at a certain heart rate for long enough, then you might see me bust a move. Yeah. But beyond that, there's the only a little two step. And if you see me trip over my cord, it's just dancing. Yeah. It's actually part of the show. It's just dancing. So, I mean, I would assume from your role at the Orion, kind of looking back at that, like you've probably had some pretty unique experiences with artists here in Huntsville. Um, is there one particular experience that stands out among the rest? I think the hands down getting to take Weezer to Marshall Space Flight Center okay. was amazing. Yeah. Just one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. Um, I had never done the Marshall tour. Okay. Yeah. Either. And being a Huntsville native, it felt like, I mean, a lot of people, you don't really get yes, the opportunity. Yes, 100%. Just, you know, no. I'm going to walk into yeah, your I'm, office. And you by the way, like, do you know who I am? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> FYI, here I am. <laughs> uh, but getting to go with them and see their excitement about it, it's like you get a little... As a Huntsville native, you can get a little disenfranchised with space. Yeah. You know, it's like everywhere. respectfully. Yeah. We we've heard it. <laughs> we get it. Man on the moon, et cetera, et cetera. But getting to see that excitement from other people's eyes and getting to watch them hear about some of the things for the first yeah. time, it really makes you 
aware of how flipping cool it is. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things like it's, like I said, it's easy to take take for granted. Yeah. This is something you like you like. Oh, I'm coming into town. I see this. I've been there. I've done that. I've checked those boxes. It's cool. I get it. But like when you look at it from you know the bird's eye view, and you're like, wow, this is this is actually a pretty cool thing. Like, there's people all across the world that come here because of this. And you're able to kind of like walk with someone like Weezer and show it to them. You're like, this is not something that I had on my bingo card this year, but I got it. (laughs) I didn't think this was going to come about. Uh, It was so cool. And obviously, like my husband works at Marshall. Um, A bunch of my friends work at Marshall. So it also felt pretty personal getting to like, just getting to see things that they're a part of and hear about it from a, you know, professional standpoint instead of like a personal standpoint and yeah you so, get you get more context for sure because yeah. my husband comes on and he's like rah, 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 and you're like got it rocket actuators yeah. and i'm like oh. yeah you just kind of nod your head and go yes i'm I, it sounds like you had a, sounds like you had a great day at work you get that space you yes. know what i mean yeah and like being able to be a part of something like that for them when it's some, something that unique and it's experience that they probably like i said never had before yeah and we'll, can never have it ever have again because yeah. there's not another yeah that's that that, that that's pretty and I, I i imagine like the the day the day-to-day operations of you being back there working with these artists and like figuring out things they like and don't like and figuring out like you know like what are the conversations like and i i, I would assume that there's probably a good amount of them that that finish their show that you know come to Huntsville for they've never been to Huntsville ever they do their show they don't really know what to expect from the Huntsville community or from the Orion itself they finish their show and they're in awe and they're amazed. What sort of like, is there a, is there a, like a moment or like a conversation that you had with an artist or you heard, overheard someone say about just Huntsville itself? I feel like one of the biggest advocates of the Orion, someone that's played there twice now, um, who obviously was already familiar with Huntsville. He's a North Alabama native himself, but Jason Isbell tweets yeah. about the Orion like pretty consistently yeah. um, when people ask about his favorite venue. And that is such an honor But just having like people on their way out pop their heads into our office and say like, it was awesome, thank you. Or on the flip side of that, it's having people come in in the morning and say, we've heard this venue is so cool. We've heard (laughs) this is a really cool place to play. We're really excited about Huntsville. Or people who try to, like Weezer did, pick the Orion as their tech rehearsal for their entire tour so that they could spend time in the city. Wow. That's a testament to what know the tvg hospitalities team has done the city of huntsville has done like it's 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 one of those things too that you know in a few years even even now it's sometimes hard you don't really take it for granted when you see concerts coming and you think oh like that's gonna be too far away and then you realize the orion's the one that posted it and then you're like wait a second like that's in my backyard like i can i can what like what that's happening here and like now that's like the the increase i, I recently talked with matt mandrella and talked a lot a lot about the work that he's doing but this the stair stepper effect with music here in huntsville is 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 unmatched and it's one of those things that's like it's just gonna get better it's true and as a kid who grew up here feeling like i was not ever going to be reflected in the culture it's such an impactful thing to realize not only has the city put so much like stock and not just like the the governmental body of the city yeah. but the people who have bought into it the small businesses oh. who have done specials for concerts the like the hotels that have reached out and said like if you guys ever need anything yeah. let us know it's everyone it's this whole ecosystem that's just like putting it back in um it's something really special to see that happening and also to be part of it is like yeah. kind of mind blowing. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a great time to be in Huntsville and it's it's it's, it's not going to slow down and it hasn't slowed down. Um, so looking at there's this, as 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 we were recording this in April of 2024, looking at the rest of the year for your role at the Orion as it's getting kicked off with season three, and looking for your music career with the EP and the new and the new single dropping. What what are some of the the things you're hoping to see and accomplish this year in 2024? I think that we've done a great job. Every day I get to go to work is like the best day of my life. Yeah. And I genuinely mean that because I am so trusted to like take visions and run with them. I think people give me, um, yeah, just like a lot of trust and a lot of, um, understanding 
about when I have this insane idea and they're like, hey, uh, build a slip and slide. I don't care, yeah. Alex. Um, dude, sh- sure. That's what the Orion needed is a slip and slide. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we did a slip and slide for Burt Kreischer and he filmed so many oh of his tour promos on that slip and slide. Yeah. I saw us. him playing golf at the ledges too and it was so funny. Like, it, it, I mean, he's a character, but like we, we could go into a whole episode just on that. Just delightful. We had these amazing like tip top experiences backstage last year, like the slip and slide yeah. or um the year prior like getting to do a whole halloween party for stevie nicks on halloween and do a pumpkin yeah, patch that's and, awesome um things like that and i i think every year i want those things to become more of the norm instead wow. of the exception um so it's yeah things like that just making raising the bar every year yeah. and making what the bar was last year more of the like normal yeah it's, it's almost like I, I think that the analogy of like you know turning those greens into yellows and yes because like at a certain point if you if you just if you're satisfied with that green you're satisfied the way you did it then there's you're missing so much possibility and so so much opportunity and you have to make that that once green of you doing the, the pumpkin patch for stevie nicks which is a pretty good green it was fun <laughs> It needs to be your yellow because then you got to be right. able to do better than that. Yeah. And it's, it's not it's because that... like you just want like you just want to outshine yourself. It's because like you're trying to just raise the experience. It's an experience not only for you, it's experience for the guest. It's experience um, as an overall. I mean, you can't be the one of the top billboards venues and not have those ex- crazy experiences. Well, and it's easy to do something like that for someone like Stevie Nicks. Yeah. It's for a sold out show that like everybody wants to go to. That's a bucket list event. That's yeah. Halloween. It's the fact that every single artist that comes in deserves that too. Oh, for sure. You know, you yeah. don't have to be Stevie Nicks no. to be treated like Stevie Nicks at the Orion. Yes. And like, I think it's one of those things too. It's like the artists that are coming here and the response they're getting from the community itself is always top tier. Like, I mean, Billy Strings there was amazing. Like Co Wetzel, which we were talking about off air, like coming back again. Like that's a testament not only to the Orion, that's just a testament to Huntsville as a community. Like they're like, Yes, we loved when he was here. He loved playing here. Let's see if we can put it back on the schedule again. And it's like those moments and those experiences mean the world to these artists. And being able to do that for no matter who who comes, you know, if it's the Steve Miller band or if it's Co Wetzel or if it's, you know, the Pup Palooza. Like we want to make sure everything has this amazing experience. Dim Dam Dog should have a great time too. Oh, yes, you know? for sure. So um, I think that that's something that we're really focusing on this year. Um, Camp to Amp. Yes. Lineup just it's like came May eleventh, I think. Yeah, May eleventh. Um, tons of amazing local artists, and it's kind of that same thing that it's like, I'm a local artist. I yeah. want you guys to have as much fun doing this as I have. Yeah. And also, it's really exciting to be like, oh my God, the Pinal hates it playing, so now I get <laughs> yeah. to do stuff for my friends and show off for my friends. Yeah. This is so much fun. I was actually having a conversation with somebody today about the camp to amp and just that the community involvement in that and the community involvement, the buyback of the community. Yes. Wanting to make this event the most amazing event it can be. It's true. The, I I genuinely believe we are so supported by the Huntsville community in a way that is, I, people just don't get that other yeah. places. Um, and so, yeah, it's the, it's from the top down, but it's also every single person that just gets excited and shares and shows up and buys a drink and a pineapple, which yeah. is the thing you can do this year <laughs> at the Orion. Yes. I love, I loved that post. I was like, I, I know. I that's was incre- thrilled. It's incredible. Sometimes, especially when the season's starting, I get really um, like siloed backstage, like yeah. rug clean or whatever yes. I'm doing at whatever stupid thing I'm coming up with <laughs> that I need to do. And I don't find out necessarily the cool things that F&B has yeah. on the table until uh, it's a show day and I'm like, walking around like wait a second and There's i'm like pineapples what's going on pineapple yeah you can have that yeah that's you're like where have you been it's like, yeah i'm sorry i've been backstage i've been a little busy that rug's clean though thanks for asking yeah, yeah like check check that box so you can your pineapple drink yeah. on it you're yeah welcome. you're welcome <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it seems like there's a, the amount of exciting things happening at the Orion with your job seems incredible. And the, the stuff happening with the, the the new EP coming out later this year, I would assume. We'll maybe, see. Maybe. We'll see. I might drag it out a little bit. Okay. Um, have that single just do the best it can possibly do yeah, on June 7th? I mean, you, you better be listening. Have single probably later in the summer. And okay. then we'll see. Kind of see what the, yeah. the crowds are I might are drag wanting. it out and do singles all the way yeah. until all of a sudden and they do like a new year's <laughs> release just, so holy do, do, just do like a little a, a little new year's release party yeah i yeah. love that love that so love a release party you but, know i love oh, a party oh i mean who doesn't need it? who everyone loves a good party i love and, a party so if anyone's listening and they want to 
find out more information about you yes. and you know find that ep find some of your past work you've done the new single where are you located where are people can people find you easiest place to find me is instagram of okay. course it's alex tries life Perfect. um but you can find my music anywhere where music is hosted i did an amazing music video i mean it, it, amazing because of meredith i'm not saying it's <laughs> uh meredith johnson from common man directed my music video okay um that i put out last summer ish um for my song the sound things make what they break with hugh Lindsay, who's another amazing local artist okay. um that is on youtube it's on facebook all my music is Spotify, Apple Music, Perfect. Amazon Music. Et yeah, cetera, everywhere, et cetera. everywhere. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll have all her links in the episode notes or in the description of this uh, video if you're watching on YouTube. So you can go in there and visit all the links, follow her, stay connected, listen to her music. But I appreciate you coming back on the podcast. It, it's four years later, but we but we got you back on. A lot's changed. We'll have to have you back on. Maybe not in four more years, but maybe like in like a year and a half, maybe, maybe two. Than, yeah, maybe when the, quicker. When the EP is actually yeah, ready when to the EP is ready to go, we'll have you back on. But that'll be like two years because <laughs> yeah. we're just gonna draw. We're just gonna like anticipation is gonna be so just high. Bread crumbs. Just a little breadcrumbs. <laughs> just sprinkle a little breadcrumbs everywhere. But I appreciate you taking the last little bit to talk. It's of fun. course, thanks for having me. Did you know that Beyond Rockets is a podcast management company that specializes in helping you launch, manage, and promote your podcast? We work with you every step along the way. To find out more information about podcast management or social media marketing, you can visit our website today, beyondrockets.com. This episode is sponsored by Relogic Research. Relogic is an engineering, aerospace, and technology company dedicated to solving our nation's toughest defense problems while investing in the bright minds of Huntsville. Relogic is excited to be a part of the innovation and continued growth of the Huntsville community. Visit their website today to see what they are excited about at relogicresearch.com. And all of this information will be in the episode notes. This is Chandler Wicks, founder and CEO of Relogic Research. We are very excited to partner with Beyond Rockets in further support of their already outstanding contribution to the Huntsville community.